Hi, welcome back to Math 111. I trust you've all finished the Chapter 4 um, test. So we're going to move on now to Chapter 5. Specifically today, we're going to talk about Section 5.1, which is quadratic functions. So Chapter 4 was all about linear functions. And when we, do lin when we graph linear functions, in other words, when we draw a picture of the solution set of linear functions, we make a straight line. When we draw a picture of the solution set for quadratic functions, we will get a parabola. Now your parabola can either do that, or it can do this. And I'm going to tell you how to tell which one you're going to get. And we're going to talk a bit more about parabolic functions or quadratic functions. But these are functions, before I go that far, they're, they're functions where the highest order term is square has degree 2. So something like y equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. Now we spent a fair bit of time in Math 95 learning how to solve quadratic equations, and we mostly solved them when y was replaced with a number. So what we were doing in that case was finding a point on this curve. Now some things I want to remind you of. The generic form for this is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. It turns out that if a is positive, you get an upwards facing parabola. If a is negative, you get a downward facing parabola. All right, let me throw some axes on here because I want to talk about some special points on these parabolas. Okay. Every parabola, every parabola will cross the y-axis exactly one time. This point where our parabolas cross the y-axis is called the y-intercept. You probably already know this, but you find y-intercepts by setting x equal to 0. So this y-intercept will always be at an x-coordinate of 0, and then whatever you get out. And actually, that's always going to be c. Now, some parabolas, not all, I didn't say all, I said some parabolas, will cross the x-axis. Parabolas can cross the x-axis zero times, one time, or two times. We'll talk about this some more. But regardless, the place where the parabolas cross the x-axis, if there are any, are the x-intercepts. And I hope you remember that you find x-intercepts by setting y equal to 0. So these will always be at some x-coordinate and 0, and some x-coordinate and zero. Now, something else you may or may not recall about parabolas is that there's a special point on them. It is this point right here where they turn around. It's at the peak. It's called the vertex. And I will tell you in just a minute how to go about finding the coordinates of the vertex. For an upwards opening parabola, the vertex always occurs at the minimum point in the function. For a downward opening parabola, what I call an upside down parabola, the vertex always occurs at the maximum point. Okay. The vertex is a very handy point. 
It is the first point to find when you are graphing a parabola. The reason for that is there's like a mirror dropped straight down through that vertex. What I just drew is called the axis of symmetry. If I were a really good artist, and if I folded my piece of paper along that axis of symmetry and held it up to the line, you'd only see one curve. Because the parabola is symmetrical on either side of the vertex. In other words, or, yeah. In other words, if this, if that point, if my y-intercept is say three units off of my axis of symmetry, that means there is another point on the other side of the axis of symmetry that's also three units off and horizontally aligned with my y-intercept. So their y-coordinates will be the same. Their x-coordinates will differ, but their y-coordinates will be the same. All right, so let's talk about how to find the vertex. If you have a parabola that is in y equals ax squared, or a quadratic formula, quadratic equation even, that's in y equals ax squared plus bx plus c form, you can find the vertex by knowing that x equals negative b over 2a. And then you plug that back in in order to find the y half of the vertex. So for example, let's say we want to find the vertex for the equation for the function y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. We're going to find the vertex by knowing that the x part of the vertex, so the vertex is a point. It's got an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. The x-coordinate is going to be at negative b over 2a. For this particular function, there is a 1 in front of the x squared, a negative 6 in front of x, and a 5 for the constant term, which means that a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is 5. So the x-coordinate of my vertex is going to be at the negative of negative 6 over 2 times 1 or 3. So my vertex, and we know it's a point, and we know now that the x part is 3. Let's go find the y part. We find the y part by plugging in the x part. So y equals x squared, but I know that x is 3, so 3 squared minus 6 times x, but I know x is 3, plus 5. So 9 minus 18 plus 5, y equals 4. So my vertex is at the point 3, 4. Okay? All right, so let's stick with this same function for a minute. Let's say now that we want to actually graph the function y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. Step number one, find the vertex. We did that. It's at the point 3, 4. The second thing you want to do, find your x intercepts, if there are any. And the way we're going to find those x intercepts is by setting y equal to 0. So let's just take, up, take out another piece of paper here function is y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. We're going to find the x-intercepts. x-intercepts always mean y equals 0. So what we're actually doing is we're going to solve the equation 
0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. You may use whatever your favorite tool is for solving quadratic equations. You have a choice of the quadratic formula, which says that x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, or you may factor. Or you may use your calculator. Your HP, your TI-84 can help you solve these. However, be aware that you have to give exact answers. So do not replace things like the square root of 2 with their decimal equivalencies. I'm going to factor this because I happen to know how it factors. So on this one, 0 is going to equal x minus 5 times x minus 1. So x is 5 or 1. This means there are two x-intercepts. And remember that these are the x's that go with y equals 0. So my x-intercepts are at the points 5, 0, and 1, 0. So we'll go back over here. Put that down here. My x-intercepts are at 5, 0, and 1, 0. Now the last thing you want to do is find the y-intercept. And then we'll graph it. y-intercept, there's only ever going to be one, but there will always be one, occurs where x equals zero. So take our function and plug in a zero for x. And we get y equals 5, which means my x-intercept occurs at the point 0, 5. Okay, so now we graph it. Okay. Let's put on the points I know. I know the vertex is at the point 3, 4. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Whoops. Yeah. Okay. What did I do wrong? Sorry. I messed that up. This is negative 4. My bad. Check my math. You'll see it. There we go. This is better. Okay. Graph my vertex. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Put on the x intercepts, which are at one, two, five, zero. And 1, 0. Now I want to take just a second here and remind you. I told you that there's a line of symmetry through that vertex, yes? So if I draw that dashed line of symmetry. You should always do this check when you find your x-intercepts. This point is 1, 2 units away from that line of symmetry. So the point on the left the left x-intercept should also be two units. One, two. So we're symmetrical, that's good. If that hadn't been symmetrical, it would have meant I messed something up. And now let's put in the y-intercept, which is at the point zero, five. Five. Now, because of symmetry, 
there's a matching point. So this is my y-intercept. But it's one, two, three units from the axis of symmetry. So I know I've got another point right there that is also one, two, three units from the axis of symmetry. Okay, and now we draw the parabola. Now this is not a V, it's a smooth curve. It's more like a U than a V, sorry, I missed. There we go. Okay, that's all there is to graphing quadratic equations. They're always going to make a parabolic shape. It might open up. It might open down. There's a pretty simple three-step process. And we're going to stop here. I'm going to show you the par parabolic form of the quadratic of sorry the parabolic form of a quadratic function the vertex form rather um, in a separate video so we will call this one done I'm going to give you a quiz this is quiz five yes there were four quizzes in chapter four they were somewhere in the videos don't ask me which ones Maybe there were. I think there were. Okay. So, quiz five. I want you to find three things. The vertex, that is a point. The x-intercepts, if there are any, and the y-intercept. For the function, y equals x squared minus 2x plus 3. I'm not asking you to graph it. I'm just asking you to find those three things. If you would like to graph it, you may, but it is not a requirement. All right. I will see you all again soon.